my fellow Singaporeans. I'm sure by now many of you would have had the chance to watch Lee Hsien Loong's National Day rally speech last Sunday. Though in truth, as many of you have already realized, it was not a National Day rally speech. It was an electioneering speech, laden with election gimmicks because vote harvesting time is around the corner. And Lee Hsien Loong is trying to entice vulnerable Singaporeans to vote for him and his party. I expect that elections will happen very soon. And all of us that strive for a better Singapore should ready ourselves for the most decisive political battle of the last half century. It was not a speech that sought to inspire, to uplift Singaporeans, to meet the future with a hopeful spirit. It was a defensive speech, one that shamelessly attempted to buy the votes of the very people that the government has been shortchanging for years. It borrowed heavily from the past, speculated about the future, but said nothing about the issues of today, issues that the PAP regime themselves have created. They say that we need them for the stability of our country. But what they have given us is instability in our own homes. A raft of large price hikes on water and electricity do not show stability. What it demonstrates is reactionary thinking and incredible short-sightedness. Singaporeans also see this, and their online comments have been rightfully derisive towards the PAP's latest vote-buying scheme. We heard about this newly minted Madeka generation the PAP just created. Lee Hsien Loong realizes that this generation represents 500,000 voters that he's in trouble with. To him, rather than the Madeka generation, they are actually the mediocre generation because his party has treated them with contempt for decades, allowed their jobs to be taken away, not returned their CPF at 55 as promised, and kept them on stagnant wages while the cost of living accelerated as they labored to build a first world country. So in truth, rather than the Madeka generation, they are the forgotten generation. They labored incredibly long hours for their families, missed time with their children to build this nation. Yet so many of them in this generation today are reduced to driving grab to make a living, despite their qualifications and abilities. They are many of the best and brightest of our country. Many of them do not have retirement adequacy today because the bulk of their CPF went towards paying for overpriced HDB apartments. They may wish also to speak with Singaporeans from the pioneer generation who realize the grave limitations of the pioneer generation package and that at the end of the day, it did not amount to very much because of the astronomical increase in healthcare costs. As they say, a glass with no bottom will never be full or even half full. And so now Lee Hsien Loong has given this generation a grandiose name. He's evoked the image of his late father and created some poultry package, all in a desperate attempt to appeal to their emotions and win, win back their votes. But Singaporeans are smarter than he gives them credit for. And they see this scheme for what it is. I am sure that the forgotten generation realize that what the PAP is giving them now is what the PAP took away from them in terms of higher taxes and relentless price increases over the last few years. It is the proverbial, I will give you one chicken wing and take away the whole chicken. My fellow Singaporeans, how unoriginal of him. Isn't it blatantly obvious that he's trying to recreate the conditions of 2015? Isn't it pathetic that Lee Hsien Loong and the PAP, as they realize that their grip on our society is weakening, are trying desperately to win us back with nostalgia rather than real policies that we desperately need? But hey, at least they changed the chess card from yellow to orange. But I want to talk about the other main feature of Lee Hsien Loong's speech, an issue that cuts ordinary Singaporeans to the bone, HDBs. We heard about an alphabet soup of new acronyms. VERS, V-E-R-S, HIP, H-I-P, HIP2. But my fellow Singaporeans, all he is doing is sugaring the pill in an attempt to appease you. He has offered to simply recondition your flats, refurbishment, which at the end of the day, you will still be paying with your CPF and hard-earned cash. All this to distract you from the fact that at the end of the day, they're still worth nothing. 
after 99 years. What Li Xianlong fed us on Sunday is nothing more than a David Copperfield sleight of hand. I don't need to remind any of you that there was once a time, a very recent time, when the PAP claimed that HDB flats were investments, even as recently as 2011. Li Xianlong's father told us that HDB prices would never go down. Li Xianlong said the same thing a few years later, that they were assets, that they were continually appreciate in value. Now, only a few years later, he is not even trying to sell that idea. He has retreated to appeasing you with schemes that avert your attention, that talk about nothing but of reconditioning your flats and ignoring the real problem that your flat is still reduced to zero value at the end of the day, that you are a lessee, not an owner. Although I may add, Lawrence Wong is still trying to continue with a fairy tale, but all fairy tales end when the cold winds of reality hit us in the face. The PAP is not offering a solution to the housing problem. They are kicking the can down the road. Thus, in 20 years, hit two in 10 years, and none of these are any real solutions to the problem. Li Xianlong won't even be around when these schemes kick into operation. And what do they solve? They solve nothing. But it shows the mediocrity of Li Xianlong and his government. They need 20 years to even plan for verse. Where is the brilliance of his so-called 4G leaders? Or is the PAP's creativity limited to only inventing more acronyms? But HDB reconditioning and vote buying handouts were not the only feature in Lee Hsien Loong's speech. You heard from Lee Hsien Loong who suggested that the main problem with the cost of living issue is people's rising aspirations and lifestyle. So he's blaming us for not making better decisions. But Singaporeans, let me ask you, does your $50 today buy as much as it did five years ago? Did your income keep up with the costs that are being heaped upon you almost day by day? Do you think that your wage increases have kept pace with price increases on water, electricity, and other necessities of life? And how does Lee Sien Long suggest that we cope with these cost increases? Use Wi-Fi instead of 4G when you watch movies. That's so ridiculous. That statement alone is a testament to how out of touch Lee Hsien Long is with the common man. He wants to take the rest of us back to the dark ages. All these cost increases don't matter an iota to him. The multi-million dollar income of he and his wife has left him out of touch with the lives of everyday Singaporeans. It is absurd to be lectured on our expenditures by a prime minister who earns more in a single day than most Singaporeans do in a matter of months. Once again, the likes of Lee Hsien Long and Go Chok Tong and the PAP live in a different city from us. These people who lecture us are the same people who say that teachers should be paying more for car parking at their schools so that their wages will be clean when they themselves get to park in many places in Singapore for $1 per day. What we need now my friends, is not any hyperbole or false sentimentality. On the eve of the bicentennial of our founding by Raffles in 1819, what we need is a rebirth of that Singapore spirit, which created our nation and which binds us as a community based on the shared fact that we are all Singaporeans. I know that many of you do not have that sense of national pride anymore that most of you chose not to hang the national flag out on National Day, that many of you do not feel at home in your own country, and yet that Singapore spirit is an eternal flame in all of us, which will never be extinguished. That Singapore spirit is able to bring about change so that the conditions in our lives can improve. That Singapore spirit was what drove the colonial British out of our country nearly 60 years ago. If we are determined, we know that together we can defeat the dark forces which intend to keep ordinary Singaporeans down and under the control of the PAP. Together, we can take back our country. That will be our true Madeka, and we will all be the Madeka generation.